these are the type of questions where um, I think the answers, as explained in the books, um, are not as clear as they could be if just said in plain English. So I want to make reliable screens that we can you know, use on test day that we don't have to think like a fourth grade English teacher. So the first screen you know, is one of our top screens. It's one that matters and it's modifier. And this is going to knock out both A and B because in both A and B, the first part of the sentence, which is digging in sediments in Northern China, comma, has to modify whatever comes directly after it. So the word that starts the sentence after that comma, and that is not describing the evidence. The evidence was not digging, it was the scientists. So A and B are immediately out for us because that modifying phrase up front here is not describing evidence, it's describing scientists. Now I'm going straight to answer choice C, D, and E. These all look relatively similar to each other. And in fact, they are very similar. Now on sentence correction, when you have a bunch of versions of a sentence that look similar, sound similar, it can be appropriate to find the best version of that sentence. Because essentially you have like three versions of the same sentence, whichever one is the best in, in your opinion should be the correct version of the sentence. Now, the things that we rely on when we're in tiebreaker mode, which is essentially looking at, you know, final screens and just making a determination based on sentences that could be good, could be bad, um, but maybe don't have like a clear defining thing that you can latch onto. The tiebreakers we look at, as we've discussed before, are number one, which of these has the clearest meaning? And if you read all of these, you know, I think that I would argue between C, D, and E that C is the clearest in the meaning. Um, we bring in the that which or the that in answer choice E because and D because we've changed the sentence a little bit. Um, we're comparing a much earlier emergence to the emergence that was previously thought essentially versus in answer choice C, we are comparing um, the complex life forms emerged earlier than was previously thought. So we're comparing emerged, like how soon they emerged to how soon they were thought to have emerged or how early they were thought to have emerged in answer choice C, but in answer choice D and E, we're actually comparing the emergence as like a noun instead of the verb form in C. So the meaning I think is like a little bit clearer in C than D and E. The second tiebreaker is conciseness. And that basically means which gets the job done with the least amount of language. Just looking at these, uh, D and E bring in some extra words for kind of like no specific purpose. Answer choice D actually brings in a few too many words, I think. Um, it's clunky and not that great. And I'd say that that's pretty much the way I feel about answer choice E as well. It's just like not as good a version as answer choice C, which is shorter, clearer, reads better. And that would lead us to our final tiebreaker. When your back's against the wall, if you have to make a decision and move on, use your ear. Okay, so how does it sound? Which one sounds the best to you? And I think that answer choice C sounds the best. The things that might give you pause about choosing answer choice C is probably that suggesting instead of that suggests or which suggests. Um, these are different types of modifying phrases. So suggesting can still modify um, the appropriate portion of the sentence here and the evidence suggests they've gathered evidence suggesting that complex life forms emerged much earlier than previously thought. We don't need all that extra language in D and E there. Answer choice C is going to be our answer.